thank God so much for the gift he has given us. Amen. Wow. And uh, one of the things that I picked up from my prophetess is that, you know, uh, like the scripture says that unto us a son is given. And uh, the prophetess went on to say that now he has to live in us. Amen. And that uh, when the son of God is living in us, he changes us. He transforms us. And uh, uh, one of the things, like I mentioned earlier, is that we are here on purpose. Amen. And one of the purposes as children of God is for us to carry Jesus. Amen. Carry Jesus and share him with others wherever we are. Amen. You don't need to wait to be able to hold a microphone. You don't need to uh, have a degree in theology. You don't need to, you know, a prophet Barbara goes to the streets. You may not have the boldness to go to the streets, but where you are at your workplace, where you are in your neighborhood, you can carry Jesus with you. Amen. And people should be able to see the Son of God living and working in your life every single day in the way you walk, in the way you talk, in the way you behave, in the way you carry yourself. People should be able, somebody say that the only Bible some people will ever read is you. Amen. So the only way people are going to see Jesus is going to be through you and I. Amen. Through the way, the way we handle people, the way we, you know, we handle situations because people are watching us. And I was thinking about this a prophetess uh, uh, not so long ago. I was at work and I was uh, dealing with some things and uh, I was asking myself, these people know I'm a Christian. You know, am I really exhibiting Jesus at the highest degree? You know, if, uh, you know, if, if, if Jesus was to show up right now, or even because I know he's ever present, uh, is he happy with me? Am I representing him to the fullest? So I think that is a challenge we need to take with us even in this holiday season amen as people are crazy about the gifts crazy about uh you know all the lights and you know i see people you know putting up lights and all these expensive things but they don't want to talk about jesus after that you know so it is so important that now that god has given us of himself that we are able to become a pipeline that we can give jesus to others and uh, Christmas, I'm just going to go back to my, uh, my personal story. Christmas means a lot to me. A lot in that, you know, uh, like Prophet said, growing up Christmas is the day when we ate meat. Some of us we were so poor, we couldn't afford meat. Brother, uh, Brother Williams, we used to eat meat on Christmas. Chicken was once a year, that's when they bring, you know, unless if you're in the village and, you know, you have chickens, but if you're in the city somewhere... And you have to buy it. it was so expensive so you always waited christmas is when you get a brand new pair of shoes so uh, and, and uh, that's why there's a saying people say not every day is christmas you know because on christmas that is when your wishes come true christmas is when you go to the city so growing up christmas was that spectacular time all family members come together all your cousins come together and uh, you think about that big meal that big meal, you sit on the floor, they put all the banana leaves down there, and uh, the, the steamed banana, the matoke, and all the, uh, the sauces, everything, and everybody's all together, and you eat. So Christmas was about eating. But as I grow up, fast forward to present, now being a, a minister, being a pastor, you know, I look at it differently. I look at it just like the scripture says, as the gift that God has given us. Amen. And many of us are looking for, what, am, what are you going to give me? What, what am I, what am I going to get? But God has given us his gift. Amen. And every year should be a reminder to each and every one of us that the gift of God is available for us to receive. But the problem is, we don't want to receive it. We want to receive the gift at our convenience. We want to receive the gift of God when we're in trouble. We want to receive Jesus. We want to call Jesus when we have an accident. We want to call Jesus when we're in a crisis. But the gift of God is for us to receive in, in our lives for every situation, for, every, for everything in your life. Amen. 
So today, my brothers and sisters, I don't want to repeat what the prophetess and the minister William spoke already. And I was going to uh, uh, talk about Isaiah chapter 9 as well. But I pray today is that you will be able to receive the gift of God. Amen. The Bible says when you hear, do not harden your heart. Amen. Open up your heart and receive. The psalmist says, test and see that the Lord is good. Let me tell you, the biggest accomplishment you will have in life is welcoming Jesus in your life. That is the biggest gift. Amen. He's the biggest accomplishment because all these other things. I was listening. Somebody was saying today that relationships, they come and go. Sometimes even if you love somebody so much, I mean, just this year has shown us a lot. People that were not supposed to go, and they went. We just saw uh, the, the televangelist, uh, Marcus Lam, and this guy was still healthy. He was still strong. He was married. He had a big business, and he left the sweetheart. If she did have Jesus, she would have given up and said, God, how could you do this to me? We saw our pastor back in Uganda this year losing her husband. A man who was full of energy and vigor just went just like that. So relationships, you know, being married may not be the biggest accomplishment. You know, going to school and getting a degree may not be your biggest accomplishment. Having a business may not be the biggest accomplishment because all these things can go away. Amen. We just saw, I think, last week in Kentucky, in Tennessee, in uh, Illinois, Houses, people, they invested all their money in their home, their memories. In a snap of a finger, everything just evaporated just like that. An entire city was wiped out. So, if all your hope and your confidence is in your house, if your confidence is in your career, if your confidence is in your wife, your husband, your children, let me tell you, they are not yours. They can be taken away anytime. But when you have Jesus, that is one thing that you have for keeps. Amen. Nobody can take Jesus away from you. Amen. The scripture says that what can separate us from the love of God? Nothing. Amen. Not even your sin. Not even your mistakes. Not even the, the things that you've done to yourself can take away the love of God. But how do you get the love of God? By welcoming the gift of God. Receiving Him in your life. And I'm telling you, when you do, your life will not remain the same. Let me just read a small portion of this scripture. Uh, just to get uh, just a glimpse of what we're talking about. Amen. Uh, Isaiah chapter 9. Amen. And I, I love this hearing different perspectives from uh, uh, from different men and women of God because it opens up your eyes to see what God, you know, can uh, you really speak to us through his word. But listen, he says, for unto us, Isaiah 9 verse 6, for unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace, amen, of the increase of his government and peace, there will be no end, amen. This is a very dangerous season we're in. Much as there is celebration, much as there is, a, you know, uh, eating and receiving gifts, but there's a lot of depression. Many people don't have peace. Many people are looking, you're looking at that chair where your father used to sit. You're looking at the end of the table where your husband used to sit. Maybe he walked away from the home. He, you know, he left the family there. Maybe your children disappeared. Maybe your children went to be with bad company. And uh, Christmas, every time it comes around, you bring back all these memories, bad me memories. Amen. But today the scripture is telling us that of the increase of his government, of his rulership, his dominion, his power and peace, there will be no end. Amen. All of us want peace in life. Amen. Some people travel to Cancun to get some peace at the beach. 
Some people, you know, go to the spa to get some peace. Some people, you know, spend millions of dollars, you know, to create a sanctuary so that they can have some peace. But let me tell you, they still kill themselves in those mansions. So the peace that surpasses all understanding, it comes from God. And today, when you welcome the Prince of Peace in your life, he's going to give you peace. Amen. He's going to cancel you. He's going to be your God. He's going to be a father unto you. Amen. Growing up without a father was so difficult. And I remember my mom used to tell me, Jesus is your father. God is your father. And I didn't quite understand it. But as I've grown up, and I'm in a situation where I'm in a foreign country, and there is nobody to ask certain questions, I've been asking God, God, how can I be a good husband? God, how can I be a father to these children? And I'm telling you, God has not only been a father to me, but he has given me instructions. He has given me guidelines on how to be a good father to my children, to be a good father to other people. Amen. So today, everything that you need is in the gift of God. Amen. God has given us his gift. And today, Christmas means that God has given the greatest gift. And all I have to do is open up my arms and receive it. Amen. Because it is mine and it is free. Amen. You don't have to pay any money. Amen. Maybe you've messed up. Maybe you've done some mistakes. Today, the gift of God won't be withheld from you, but will be given to you. And when you receive this gift, amen, you will be able to come back to alignment with God. And God will direct your footsteps. God will align you with purpose, amen, because he has a good plan. The gift of God is not for evil. The gift of God is for your good, amen. I hope this blessed you today, and uh, man, I, I wish you could go on and on, but we, we have a lot of things to do. We have food to eat, and if you haven't made your way here yet, you don't have any plans, please come join us. We're going to eat together. We're going to have a wonderful time as a family. Come join us, 602 Main Street, for a wonderful time of uh, uh, you know, fellowship and uh, fun and entertainment. We are going to be mighty blessed. Amen? Let us pray. Father, we thank you for your word this morning. Thank you for the speakers that you've brought unto us. Thank you for the word you have spoken to us. You are the greatest gift. And Father, we pray today in the name of Jesus that your gift will indeed give us the peace. Help us to welcome you. Help us to accept you. Help us, mighty God, to receive you in our lives today. And Lord, may the peace you've talked about in your word become evident in us may we receive it may we walk in it and may we give it to others and lord help us to share you with others in jesus mighty name and everybody said amen hallelujah